Well, this is my uh, checkering cradle. And I needed a checkering cradle because I want to checker a gun stock. And it turns out it's a lot easier if you have a cradle than trying to hold it in your lap or putting it on a workbench or something like that. I got my little tools loaded in this little holder here. And this cradle is made out of uh, it says 2x6 there on the bottom. The 2x4 on the top there. And the two posts are 4x4s. My little tray is 3 quarter inch plywood. I got the little lamp on there that I read in my Brownells Kinks book that if you uh, just use one lamp kind of 45 degree angle to your work that it'll make the checkering stand out much much easier a lot less strain on your eyes well look at that focus how about that I labeled my uh, tools because my eyes are going bad now at uh, my age and it's easier to look on the handle and see what the the little tips you see the little tips there well they're all they're different they do different things but instead of trying to figure out what they are and stare at them you just look at the handle so there's two cutters there on that one there's three cutters on that one that one's very hard to use by the way there's a vernier um, it just cuts a straight line uh, this one here is, well, whatever it is, it's one. Yeah, let's go back out here. This um, is a gun I just refinished. This is a, uh, well, it's a Crescent Arms gun. It's called a Knickerbocker, made by the American Gun Company, uh, about 1900. It's a hammerless, side-by-side, 12-gauge, -side, laminated steel barrels. It's not Damascus, but in a, people call it Damascus, but real Damascus is twisted steel. This is laminated steel, but it, it's, it is. It's very pretty. But anyway, I re refinished the gun, or I, I guess you'd call it uh, cons conservation restoration. So this is more of a restoration and conservation. It's like a pro modified um, because these guns really aren't, you know, it's not a purdy side by side or something like that. So it's a great gun to uh, learn, learn some of these things that you're doing. This, uh, here's another one. This is the, the exact same model probably very close to the same year however this one has what they call fluid steel barrels um, so you can use modern smokeless powder in it um, and the barrels aren't in there now because but this is how the checkering cradle works you put your uh, piece of that you want to checker in between the two uh, posts there and then you can rotate it and do the checkering around it. Now this this stock has no checkering on it and never did because I built this stock from a, a plank, a walnut plank back in 1960, 68 or 7, 67 or 68 to replace the broken stock that was on it and it was so so full of oil and it was just you couldn't do anything with it so I carved this one out from uh, from scratch basically and uh, put it on there and the, the stock does have a little bit of grain on it um, and then I'd like to refinish refinish the stock and then add the, add the checkering. You can see how it it rotates around. 
and it can be locked in place with uh, my wing nuts here. This gives you um, an idea of the, the checkering tools I'm using. This is a, a checkering set from Gun Clinic Tools. This is an old set. I've had this for a long time. Uh, and they do. They work very well. And the, um, the cutters are replaceable. This is a more modern one. This is the uh, Dembart gun stock checkering tool kit called a master set and the cutters in uh, and these are replaceable as well um, which is really nice because they're, they're they're not cheap but you can if you buy just the cutter and switch it out with your uh, handle then it, it's not bad at all and that's like uh, like these here uh, these are the these aren't these are from the gun clinic checkering set uh, there it is and you can geez I can't even see that and I got my glasses on well anyway the cutting head there is replaceable and this is oh yeah all right this this one you actually this cutter here you use a lot so it's a uh, 60 degree and it cuts one line so you would do your outline and pretty much the whole pattern with that before you went and finished it with the rest of these tools so and then this one here this did have checkering on it that's a beautiful piece of walnut there this did have checkering on it right here um, it wasn't it wasn't really you know over the top or anything but it was just enough to, to give the gun a nice purchase when you shot it. Um, and the butt pad is long gone. The Bakelite, uh, they made it, they were Bakelite kind of material. Um, and good luck finding one of those. You'd have to scour eBay. Uh, I know everybody says, well, you know, Dixie, not Dixie Gun Works, but the, the, um, the gun parts, I guess it's Gun Parts Incorporated now. Um, they used to be numeric arms. Um, they used to have every part you could ever possibly need. And uh, now, of course, they don't. So I just, I made my own. And I used a piece of uh, exotic hardwood that kind of looks like uh, you would make a, a custom leather butt pad. It almost looks like leather, uh, really, really pretty. And I put a, a brass plate on the bottom. So if you stack it, if you're out shooting skeet or something like that, and you stack the gun, it won't, it won't chip out the, uh, the back. And where are we here? We'll go, the tools I use a lot. I've got my, uh, my drill press. It's got the handy, uh, the, the table on it, that's uh, really, really handy to have. Plus it goes on and comes off easy. Um, then a bandsaw, 18 inch bandsaw I think, that's, that's very handy to have. And this is my not so expensive router table, but it's just expensive enough that it, it gets done what I need to get done. And the same thing with the belt grinder. It gets done what I need to get done. And then welding. This is my welding station. And the welding station is here. Um, so that would be the bench for that. Then don't go crazy. All those gas cans get moved if you're going to do any welding. But And then my anvil is actually, you know, the ubiquitous piece of a railroad track. And I haven't even done anything with the, the grinder yet to make it look like an anvil. I just bang on it right now and it, and it works fine. Um, let me go back around. I use those tools a lot. And then we get to my, my polishing station, which I put together here. I got my uh, Ryobi 8-inch um, grinder. And I've got a build or some attachments or something so that I can uh, sharpen my drill bits and, and stuff like that because uh, the ones that came with the unit I've got 
and I just can't figure out how to get them back on. So I'm just going to make something else myself. This is uh, my polishing system here. My, uh, this came from Harbor Freight. You know, like I said, Harbor Freight's not bad. If you look at uh, what it is and figure out what you want to do with it, you know, and you'd be surprised. Um, it does a pretty good job. Uh, my belt grinder, my actual belt grinder, uh, is this piece of hardware here, and this uh, this is this is expensive. Uh, this was damn close to two thousand um, dollars, but it 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 almost makes sense to spend that much money because you're, you're never going to lose it. You'll always get back what you put into it. Um, so, you know, some at sometimes it just doesn't pay to buy cheap. You know, if, if there's any way at all that you can, you know, get something that's good, get get it good, and then just wait. Now we go over to bench now. This would be bench number three. This is... Um, where a lot of stuff happens on this bench. Um, I built this bench a long, long time ago. I've got, oh, gee, i got to show you this. This is uh, from 1905, 1910. It's um, a really, really big machinist vice. And this was uh, my great-grandfather's. So it's been in the family all that time. And my grandfather passed away um, years ago and then they uh, one day they asked the, the family everybody in the family well you know they were cleaning out grandpa and grandma's house you know what is there anything in there that you thought you might like and I go the only thing I want is that vice that was down in his basement and uh, that's what I got so I've had it I've had it all these years it's, it's I use it for everything and that's just my bench and the appropriate garbage. you got to have a stop sign. Uh, it's just like any dorm college. And then I've got my, my warning here. I'll see if I can zoom in so you can read that. Uh, this facility is used in FAA air traffic control. Loss of human life may result from service interruption. Any person who interferes with air traffic control or damages or trespasses on this property will be prosecuted under federal law they're not kidding around i'll tell you that so i i put that in my shop to, to deter all those people that would do that this is a really cool sign this used to hang over oddly enough tom's mechanical emporium this was in uh, syracuse new york and he, he's the gentleman that used to work on my 1967 Austin Healey 3000 BJA, BJ8 Mark III. That was my father's. And my 1967 Mini Cooper S that had the uh, right-hand drive and used to freak everybody out. But uh, when we moved here... To where we are in the uh, beautiful state of uh, Oklahoma. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, then we go to workbench number four. This would be the reloading bench. So all my reloading I do on this bench. Um, and I'm going to be doing some shotgun shells for those shotguns behind me. Because the one I use black powder to load those. Um, then you gotta have you gotta have the uh, old beer fridge. If you don't have a beer fridge in your workshop, well, it's not really a workshop. But I don't drink the beer anymore, so that's okay because it's full of ginger ale. And for a long time, I was building guitar amplifiers, and that was my my logo right there. That was the uh, penny farthing bicycle. And I would mostly I would be making these from scratch. Like, uh, not that one. This one this one came from a, a gentleman out of New Jersey. But this one here I just built from scratch. And uh, the schematic I um, just pulled it out of my head. And if you don't have a TV to watch the news, you don't know what's going on. Um, 
it gets really hot here in the summer, so I got that. Um, I got my books. You got to have a lot of storage, uh, place for people to sit down. And then we swing over here to this bench. Um, this bench is kind of cool because the bottom of it is this oak chest. And it used to be for clothing and stuff like that. And this is actually the oak chest that came out of my dorm room at Plattsburgh Air Force Base when I was an air traffic controller in the Air Force. So that'd be 1972. Um, and now it's a workbench. They don't make them like that anymore. That is not a IKEA uh, piece of equipment there. That thing, uh, that thing will last. Um, I do a lot of electro. I used to do a lot of electronics on this bench, um, and that's that's what that was for. Uh, you can see I got a lot of light in my shop. It's because it's the more light you have, the easier it is to see. Um, and then uh, now the modern age, if you don't have a laptop, you're not connected. You got to be connected. Um, that's those all my soldering irons there. I got a soldering iron for everything. This is Note Man. Note Man keeps uh, is the keeper of the jams, and Note Man keeps track of and lords over everything. keeps keeps track of what's going on. I'll give you a shot of Note Man from the side here. Uh, Note Man was created in Hopkinsville, Kentucky around 1972. Uh, one morning, probably three in the morning, I was really bored. Um, took all the coat hangers out of the closet and then just started making Note Man. He used to have legs and he stood on top of a uh, wooden cable spool and we spray painted them blue day glow paint and then you would shoot the black light up underneath them and turn out all the lights and you can you can imagine the rest from there but it was a different time you know so um, this is really where I spend most of my time here this would just be my my work workstation bench and a lot of the electronic I built a bunch of amps on this bench um, and then right now, it's, it's whatever whatever I'm into usually gets done on this bench. Uh, and as we move around, I got all my oh, I gotta go the other way. All my my storage for these uh, different brands, uh, more storage, more storage, different brands, um, and then more storage, different brands. So there's the old. Uh, Oh, the garage is completely insulated. Uh, walls, roof, everything. So, and then up here in the corner, there's my, my heater. So, I've got heat, I've got AC, uh, I've got everything I need. Um, and then I'm getting together my bluing station so I can blue some gun parts. Uh, not, not a big deal, just a little big deal. And then we get back to where we started with the uh, with the checkering cradle so the checkering cradle is the project you can put one together very easy and I didn't use any plans I didn't draw it out on paper I just uh, I did use a ruler though um, just to get an arm's length measurement or figure out it's, it's a lot easier if you use a ruler and don't eyeball it but I just started sticking stuff together and seeing if it worked. And if it worked, then uh, I made it permanent. Uh, the big rods in it are 5 8 uh, all thread. I got those at Lowe's. I love all thread. You can do all kinds of things with all thread. So, what I'm going to do is when I get halfway decent at this checkering thing, uh, I'm going to start checkering this. Well, actually, we're going to start on this one right here. Oh, let me spin that so we can see it. Yeah, this one, we're going to start on this one. And we'll do right in here. We'll do a, uh, put the design up here and then have it come down like this. And the, all of these checkering tools right here are 20 lines per inch. Or 22. 22. 
22 lines per inch and all that check ring we're, we're going to do right in here and then obviously the same on the other side so when I get doing with uh, get done with that it's really going to add a nice extra dimension and I'll keep you informed of how I make out with that the trials and tribulations so from uh, sunny Oklahoma here um, that'll be it and I'll see you all soon okay Thank you.